Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janelle Norville, this edition's top stories. The island's chief medical officer advises compliance with COVID-19 protocols as revised measures come into effect. WASCO moves into the second phase of works at the John Compton Dam and the Bankers Association's good tidings at Cornerstone. Amended COVID-19 measures, which take effect today, November 16, 2020, have been reinforced to target areas of high transmission as recommended by health officials. The stricter measures come on the heels of rapidly increasing cases of COVID-19. Over the weekend, 15 new cases were recorded. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George says that epidemiological links between COVID-19 patients indicate a lack of compliance to protocols. Jesse Leos reports on these observations and tightened protocols to limit social interaction. St. Lucia has updated its COVID-19 classification to clusters of cases. As recent as this past weekend, epidemiological links are being established between most of the diagnosed. On Sunday, 15th November, five of the nine cases registered were connected to earlier patients. Three of the four cases registered on Friday are confirmed links to earlier patients also. The Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Sharon Belmar-George, notes that the virus's reproductive rate has increased in this second wave on the island. She attributes non-adherence to the protocols as a prime cause. Our contact tracing team, they've noted the increases in transmission in our positive cases. What do they note? The level of risk from our positive cases indicating the lack of compliance to the various protocols and policies that have been put in place um, to date. So that given we know the lack of compliance, it puts us at this stage in a very critical um, position where if we don't work to to break the chain of, of transmission with immediate effect, it would lead to our, our forecasting and our projections over the next 14 days to almost tripling the numbers that we, we are noting to date. While authorities are generally satisfied with the performance of the business sector in its compliance to the protocols, they remain concerned with what transpires during social activities. Acting Commissioner of Police Milton Daisy says the force has had to deal with protocol offenders in this regard. We realize that we realize that the protocols that had been established, especially um, that was two weeks ago, persons were not um, fully complying. I must um, say that at um, this point we realize that. The wearing of masks, there was a, a vast improvement in the city where persons were um, wearing their mask, I must admit. However, there were certain um, protocols not being followed, for example, at the various bars and um, places of public entertainment. We saw that um, the persons were supposed to have bought their drinks and leave the bar, but that was not happening. Also, we have um, we are still getting complaints on the buses where um, persons are not complying with um, the, especially the drivers, the total number of persons that they need to carry. Um, we are getting the complaints. We are um, getting videos of persons who I must um, at this point um, thank some um, the members of the public who see it fitting to report these um, in incidents. In the update to the nation on Friday, 13th November, Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney announced amended protocols targeting social events. Mass gatherings and social activities are strictly prohibited. No provisions are to be made for celebrations of any kind, including birthdays, retirements, wedding and funeral receptions, wakes, boat rides or picnics. All sporting activities are also prohibited, including gyms. All daily church and religious services are limited to 25 individuals within the church compound. Bars must adopt the grab-and-go policy as consumption of alcohol at establishments is not allowed. Bars must also close daily at 4 p.m. Similarly, all food establishments must offer only takeaway services as dining in is prohibited. We have reached a tipping point. 
we can change our projection and maintain, for the most part, the economy and the health of our society. But we have to be disciplined. This is the only thing that we can do. Failing which, that we will have to strengthen those protocols even further. It's sad that persons continue to go to bars and hang out outside. It's sad that persons were continuing to have beach parties. We need to take this thing seriously, St. Lucia mm -hmm. and St. Lucians. We're the only ones who are going to suffer if we fail to rise to this challenge. And these protocols are to be guidelines for you. And by strengthening those guidelines to help the enforcement officers to implement these guidelines. The amended protocols take effect Monday, 16th November, and will be subject to review in a week. Between Friday, 13th November to Sunday, the 15th, the island registered 15 new cases of COVID-19. In this same period, 13 patients recovered, were released from care, and reintegrated into their communities. From the Government Information Service, I am Jessie Leance reporting. The water and sewage company Wasco has officially launched phase two of the desilting works of the John Compton Dam. More in this report. Throughout the years, the John Compton Dam has retained over 1.7 million cubic meters of silt, which has displaced over 400 million gallons of storage water. This phase will see the dredging of the dam to increase the total water reserve capacity of the plant. Chairman of the Board of Directors, Francis Denbo, explains the complex undertaking will see the transfer of silt to the sediment disposal area through both onshore and offshore pipes. The reservoir's full capacity has been reduced from 700 million gallons of water storage to 300 million gallons. The, cha the challenge then was to bring the reservoir back to its original capacity as future storms could result in the reservoir being completely filled with silt Bearing in mind that with each rainfall within the forest, there is a continuous leakage of silt into the reservoir on a daily basis from exposed landslides on hundreds of mountain terrain surfaces that are impossible to access or rehabilitate. Assumptions are that it will take 8 to 10 years of dredging works to fully desil the reservoir. Speaking at the ceremony held in Millet on Thursday, the minister with responsibility for the island's natural resources, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, explains that a supporting project facilitated through the forestry division to stabilize the soil around the dam will prove to augment Wasco's efforts to bring about a more improved water quality and infrastructure. This is another, another major accomplishment for us as a team. It's a major, another major accomplishment for us as a government, and you heard from the chairman all the work that we have done for the past four and a half years. It has not been easy, but I can stand up here and say I have a team that I believe in. I have a, a government and a cabinet that's very supportive of what we are doing with Wasco, and I'm sure, like the pastor prayed for us a while ago, that we would see the completion of phase two without any major accident. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Shastney commended the work of the Natural Resources Minister and his team for their continuous efforts to build a more resilient St. Lucia. But it's so good to see that a group of men and women have come together and put their minds to it to progress. And this is why we keep on saying that we need to build a new St. Lucia. Not just a better St. Lucia, but a world-class St. Lucia. And it starts with water. We need to have secure, clean water being distributed through the length and breadth of this country to allow development to take place. The desilting of the John Compton Dam is being funded by the Caribbean Development Bank, the Government of St. Lucia, and the water and sewage company, Wasco. From the Information Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. Preparations for the hosting of the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers continue here as officials create an environment of safety against the coronavirus. Irma Demar reports. 
The events company of St. Lucia ECSL and the St. Lucia Tourism Authority, SLTA, held the check presentation ceremony for the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers. Arc. This event is being scaled down from 250 to 100 participating vessels due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In attendance at the ceremony were key stakeholders and sponsors of the event, which is held annually in St. Lucia for the past 30 years. The IGY Rodney Bay Marina is the event partner for the Arc and was represented by the general manager, Sean DeVoe. Also present was the chairperson for the St. Lucia Tourism Authority, Chris Gustav, and CEO of ECSL, Laureen Sidoni. The events manager for the Caribbean for the World Cruising Club, Peter Kozia, was also in attendance. Stakeholders expressed their appreciation to sponsors for their support, especially during a challenging year. Laureen Sidoni is the chief executive officer for the events company of St. Lucia. We do have 30 years of data to work with. So we have a list of sponsors that have supported us. I'm not sure if any has supported us since the start of ARC and ARC Plus, but we do have a list of sponsors that have been with us for a number of years. So in terms of targeting con um, companies to be a sponsor, we normally start with that list and then we extend it. We, we, we decide and we, we, we try to figure out which companies um, can get any sort of investment or a return on investment in terms of the sponsorship. Um, and we would try to attract new companies as well. The Atlantic Rally for Cruisers will run under strict protocols for the protection of participants and the public against the coronavirus. The general manager of the IGY Rodney Bay Marina, Sean DeVoe, explains the protocols that are in place. For the ARC, the participants will un undergo one week of voluntary isolation on board. After that, they will conduct their negative, well, a COVID test, which hopefully will be negative, um, and they will be approved to sail across the Atlantic. Crossing the Atlantic on average takes about 16 to 21 days. So if we add those days up on the sea and the isolation in Las Palmas, the average participant will get to St. Lucia having been in isolation for 21 or more days, along with a negative COVID test in hand. In addition to that, daily temperature checks will be conducted and recorded by the captain on board for everybody on board. Those documents, along with others, will be provided to the Port Health 48 hours before arriving to St. Lucia. And if they are deemed through the CMO's office, if they are deemed to see anything irregular or that could be a potential threat, the vessel is dealt with on anchor and not on the shores of St. Lucia. The organizers for the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers are working with the Department of Health to ensure the event is executed safely. From the Government Information Service, Hilmedi Mark reporting. The Bankers Association of St. Lucia donates to its fifth home for the Financial Information Month. The collective group of financial institutions visited the staff and residents of the Cornerstone Humanitarian House in Castries, once again bearing gifts of essential food items and supplies. Five homes across the island are now the recipients of months of essential food and grocery items, thanks to the donations of the Bankers Association of St. Lucia. During the month of October, representatives from 11 competing financial institutions journeyed to the Villa St. Joseph Home for the Elderly in Denry, the St. Lucia Rainbow Children Home, the New Beginnings Transit Home, the Morgush Club 60 and Adult Daycare Center in Chazel, and lastly, the Cornerstone Humanitarian House, with a lot more than just warm smiles. We are so pleased that Financial Information Month has afforded us the opportunity not only to impact financial literacy as part of our strategy, but also to meet with people in the community, those who are more in need, and to share with them some of the the, 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 the items we can purchase as an association. Financial Information Month is an annual educational campaign created by the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, the ECCB, in 2002. According to local representative of the ECCB, these donations really highlight the humanitarian side of the banking sector. As you know, Financial Information Month is a time where we seek to educate and empower our people and this year we are so elated to be a part of it with the Bankers Association of St. Lucia as they contribute to the well-being of the less fortunate in our society. Representative of the Division of Human Services, Andrea Alcide, 
says the Cornerstone Humanitarian House has been open to persons who are homeless and destitute for approximately 23 years. The sole purpose of this institution is really to house persons who are destitute, who don't have family and nowhere to go. Um, we see now the influx of the persons getting older, so we really have a lot of older persons here, and we're very grateful for this beautiful gesture of food items, and we know it's going to go a long way for us, particularly now in the current situation that we're facing. The Cornerstone Humanitarian House currently accommodates 28 residents. The Bankers Association of St. Lucia made food donations to a total of five homes, two homes for children and three for the elderly. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment wishes to notify all clients of the Public Assistance Program of Babano, Castries, Grosile and Susi Millet regions that payment for the month of October will commence from Monday 16 November to Friday 20 November 2020 at the Castries City Hall from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. daily. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. If you are in receipt of an abnormally high bill, it is highly possible that you have a leak. That leak may not always be visible. Before you contact Wasco, conduct a do-it-yourself test. 1. Record your meter reading. 2. Do not use water for 30 minutes to 1 hour. 3 take another meter reading. If the reading changes, you have a leak. Contact a plumber to identify and fix the leak at the earliest. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, WASCO. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle of Quayol. Monsieur Ta, Jesse. Monsieur Madame, Department of West Coast we formation a gouvernement cette ci GIS et Télévision Nationale via NTN Capositou Nouvelle à Coyol, présentez Primus Hutchinson. En considération de la situation de la maladie corona, présentement, en façon qui a augmenté si tellement rapidement, l'organisation NIMAC, devant une consultation sous coup, va le dépasser un établissement d'administration financière qui a souci de près de fin. J'ai pris deux ou trois décisions nouvelles pour renforcer la protection du pays contre la pandémie. Selon le chef officier médical, Dr. Sharon Belma George, le corona a été causé de la mort et le mot, c'est qu'à cela, car on sait si tellement vite. Le conseil, c'est que si on n'a si pas agi en compliance et puis c'est que les qui en place, c'est qu'à cela, il est venu encore pas pour plus haut. Alors, il est nécessaire pour implémenter WEG 9, pour continuer la bataille contre la mauvaise pandémie. Le premier ministre de qui est aussi le chef de l'organisation de MAC, Honorable Alain Chasney, qui est pour l'année limitation à toute activité sociale. Le premier ministre Chasney, qui a demandé pour le secteur public et privé pour encourager les travailleurs pour travailler en caille, plutôt en place de business et en bureau, pour réduire à ce contact et puis en alerte. Le premier ministre a conseillé le secteur privé et public pour réviser l'opération qui est en place business et côté qui est possible pour quitter les travailleurs opérés en casio plutôt. Le business qui est resté fermé depuis 9 h soir, tout le pour fermer depuis 4 h après-midi. Et place business qui n'est pas le à d'ailleurs aussi, ça reste ouvert. Mais c'est pratique là, qui est seulement ni pour acheter, ça y est, et qui est le établissement ça là. Le premier ministre, là, à ce premier ministre, chasse des qui personne n'a pas supposé combler le bocabaoué, car le boisson, après 4 heures après-midi, eh bien, il a semblé en grande quantité. Après, à présent, le service de l'église, éclairement, ça n'est pas plus que 25 personnes pour assister. La nuit, la clé à ce tout cérémonie de mariage, avec l'autre activité sociale, expo aussi. Le premier ministre, chasse des car aussi conseil public, là, pour ne pas en toucher même la famille pour visiter Kaez Yonalot pour l'autre des semaines pour venir. Et ça, c'est pour l'autre toutes les autres activités. Là aussi, par exemple, il y a des activités publiques, ça doit être nettement. Assistant chef de police, Milton Desi, pour dire que les gens qui continuent à entrer en pays par la porte de ça veut dire illégalement, et activités criminelles, ça a l'occasion pour quatre individus de venir arrêter. 
communauté Jacques et communauté qui a essayé de trouver un pays à cette ici par la porte d'air. Tout ce protocole, ça a commencé lundi, le 16 novembre, et qui a continué à réviser à d'ailleurs si maintenant encore. Gagne Cricket Zooks, dans cette ici, avec l'organisation qui a supporté, ça c'est Indibet. Vous avez un chèque à valeur de 10 millions de dollars américains pour le ministre des Affaires et Éducation en cette ici. Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobot. Ça, c'est honorable. Excusez-moi. Pour cette ça là c'est pour assister les étudiants qui ne peuvent pas assister les à l'école au résultat du malade de Corona. Et aussi parce qu'ils ont besoin d'assistance de l'agence et qui peuvent aider pour ça trouver un laptop pour suivre les l'école. là Durant ces jeux cricket pour l'année 2020, l'organisation Indibet te promet pour présenter Gain Cricket Zouk en cette ci il y a 100 dollars américains pour chaque 6 et 4 points qu'ils fait. Ces joueurs ont aussi pour trouver 154 dollars américains pour chaque 6 qu'ils enregistrent et 200 dollars américains pour chaque pichette qu'ils ont connu de leur jouer. Un de bête est aussi d'accord pour hausser la contribution de par 10 millions de dollars américains. La présentation de été faite le 12 novembre 2010. Côté représentatif, les Zouk de cette ci Mlle Sou, mon plaisir, et Indibet, présenté un chèque à valeur de 10 000 dollars américains pour l'honorable Dr. Gil Rigobert. Mlle, mon plaisir, dit que c'était un long pour faire une mission pour les étudiants en cette ci et trouver à, qui trouvait attractif par la situation malade de Corona et qui a continué pour loger la main depuis sa vie nécessaire. On a Dr. Gil Rigobert, remarqué qui il a remercié l'organisation Indibet et Gain Cricket Zoux pour quoi contribuer à cela pour supporter le secteur éducation au pays parce qu'il a tout effort que le gouvernement a continué à faire avec a continué à faire, il a toujours ni besoin d'assistance, notre agence de l'or pour aider. C'est comme ça que nous avons cette nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour vous garder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je vous remercie pour vous garder pour cette nouvelle. Merci à Pearl Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Novel.